Okay, this is a big topic in Rome research, queries. A huge amount of power comes out of your ability to do this. This and block references are the two things that make the task management truly possible. Because it is so fundamental, and because you may need to modify queries if you add your own contexts, um, or if you want to build a page in a slightly different way, you need to understand how these work. So let me walk you through the basic functionality of queries. Uh, just so you know, uh, when I built them out here, because this is my demo graph, I don't have a lot of information here, so I used structural stuff to build it out. It's not terribly useful information, but it does show you how the basic queries will work. So every query has within it, I'm going to click on here so you can see it, has within it an and. Uh, it's possible that you might be able to do it without an and in it. I actually haven't messed with it. Um, but the and uh, is what allows it to um, search. You'll notice when I build the query here, um, I actually put double brackets around the query. That can be useful um, because when you are querying things, sometimes you can also say don't include things that use the phrase query. Now, it won't eliminate the very query that you're in. It won't be self-referential in that way, but it will help you um, if you are querying other stuff. You can filter out things that have the phrase query in it. And Actually, I can, I'll show you that a little bit further on. So the basic functionality is this. It's within, I'm going to type it out for you so you can watch me type it here. Um, so there's how the query looks when you're done. This is anything that has inbox in it is what this query says. Um, and so anything that has the word inbox is included in this query. Here's how I would type that. So first of all, to type a query, you need to use the double braces. Not double brackets, but double braces. Just like the brackets, when you type the open ones, the closed ones uh, will occur naturally. Since I put query in double brackets, I'll also do that. Of course, those also show up. The word query is in here. Now you do need a colon after that. And then you need a new brace because every one of these other uh, um, components here, ands and ors and nots and betweens, requires their own set of braces. But this is not double braces. This is single braces, so one. Again, it makes the closing one, so now you have three closing braces at the end, two at the beginning, and then one before this and. You type and, and then you look for whatever you're looking for. In this case, I was looking for the inbox, but whatever thing you want to look up here, you want to look up the task framework, um, that will show anything that has the task framework page listed on it. And so that's how the basic functionality of the query works. You need the double braces. Um, you need query. You can use double brackets on query or not. It doesn't actually matter, but it gives you a little more power in terms of filtering down the road if you needed to. And then you need the AND clause, also within a brace, just a single brace, though. And the colons separate things. Notice that the double brackets disappear in the rendering of it here. And I'm not using any fancy CSS um, extra things here. I'm just using basic Rome functionality. But that's how it looks in the basic Rome functionality. So that's your um, uh, query frame here. As you can see, you can make them come and go. You can also, within individual ones, eliminate results so you can kind of not eliminate them but make them disappear momentarily so you can do that so that's the basic functionality to use and more powerfully here i have the same basic query thing the same and but i included next to inbox task framework so that essentially means show me everything that has both inbox and task framework in it. and so as you'll note um, things that had inbox there were 19 of them here, there are just five things that list both inbox and task framework. And here they are. So that one, if I were to type it out separately, just so you can kind of watch me do that, that's the um, double brackets, like it was before, or double braces, excuse me, then the double brackets around query, which again are not absolutely necessary. In fact, just for the sake of it, let me show you that it works just fine without the double brackets around query. Then the open brace here for the and, and then whatever pages you want it to include, if you want it to have the inbox, um, if you want it to also say it has to include task framework, and if you want it to also say, for instance, that you need it to also include um, quick capture. I see it's in one of those up there. Now you've got the one result, this result right here. And so that's how that functions. And can have as many of these as possible, but they're all going to be, it has to be an all of those things in order for that to function. And 
it's worth noting that queries um, work within nested bullets. Uh, at the moment, I have a sneaking suspicion that once attributes are included, things will be able to be in siblings as well. You could query an attribute and then the same bullet point level, another attribute. But for the moment, things have to be either on the same in the same block or within nested blocks in order to show up um, as ands um, in here. Okay, so that's how the and works. I'll close these up so that I'll actually leave that one open so we can compare. Or, you still need the basic and, I think. You might be able to get away with just an or, but for the sake of simplicity, um, I'm going to leave the and in there just so you understand it. So this now is saying not things that are both inbox and task framework, but saying things that are either inbox or task framework. You've got your double braces, you've got your and. Within your and, you've got an or. So you see you're still open brace, open brace, and then you've got an additional closed brace at the end there. So to type that, if I were to type that separately, double braces, double bracket query, colon, open brace, which adds the closed brace, and open brace, which adds the closed brace, or, and then inbox. And of course, it's same with and. I could add another or to this mix as well. Now let's say or quick capture. That may not add any other things because they're probably, no, it did. So now there are 24 results. So it's got all, all of those listed in there. That's how the OR framework works. Sorry if I'm uh, fire hosing you with information here, but I'm doing, the, doing my best to cover it uh, relatively quickly so we can move on to the rest of the inbox stuff. Now, NOT. NOT has an AND, um, and then it says you can exclude things from that. Same basic structure as the OR clause that we had above. We're saying we're looking for everything that's in the inbox but we're saying that is not include task framework. So you may recall above, uh, when you did them both, um, you got uh, six results. When you did either, you got 22 results. When you say only inbox, not task framework, you get 14. So you can see how the functionality is somewhat different. Same basic flow here. I'm gonna type it so you can see it in action. If I were to type, double braces, double brackets, query, colon. We need our and, let's say things are in the inbox. And then we need to open a new brace. We have our not, unless we're just for the sake of seeing something different. Let's do a quick capture here. So this is everything that's inbox, but not quick capture. And we have 19 results uh, that come from that. So that gives you an idea how not works. You can do the same thing um, I list not or here as a separate thing because you can have multiple nots. You can say it's in the inbox. It is not in either task framework or in daily tasks. That's just nesting another or within the not clause. Um, you can see there are five things that are listed like that. I could build a similar query here with double braces uh, and then the double bracket for query. And then the open brace for the and, which we'll say inbox here. So something's just in the inbox. Sorry, I clicked out, I shouldn't. But it is not in either. There's our not, and then there's our or. And notice now we have one, two, I'll put them here. One, two, three, four, five open braces, and then five closed braces all gathered there at the end. So we are still in balance. So things that are not in the task framework um, uh, nor are they, let's say, listed under um, daily tasks. And so if they're not in either of those, um, we have the five results, and I think that's why I used above two, but you can see that now how I type it out there. And then last, and this one is, is an interesting function, between. You can look for things that are tagged uh, inbox in this case, between dates. And so I say everything is inbox between September 15th and September 19th. And it brings up all of these. Again, all of this is would be much more effective in a, in a live graph where you're not looking at just structural things. But this gives you the general idea of how queries work overall. So for between, I'm not going to type this one out separately. I think you've seen enough now to understand. But within the and brace, you have a between brace, and then you have an open date and a close date. Uh, and that's how between works to build queries. So this is, I mean, there's, you can layer them a lot more and you'll see me layer them more 
as we look at the inbox query here in a moment and as we look at more complicated queries down the road. But this is the basic fundamentals. This is how the queries essentially lay out in Rome. And I think it gives you a good groundwork to understand how the process uh, will work as we move through our inbox and into our projects and into our next actions, especially where that becomes more important to understand how the queries work.